All right, on this episode of Virtual Repair Cafe, we've got a suitcase. Now, this isn't something I would expect to be very useful in the next few months, but a friend of mine asked me to take a look at it, and she's very optimistic that things are gonna turn around quickly. So what I was told is that the handle doesn't go down all the way. So it goes down part way, and then doesn't go the rest. I think this is gonna be pretty easy. All right, so let's see if we can figure out how this is supposed to work. Well, it's kind of hard to tell, but I think I can see the problem on this shaft right here. Right, right as it goes into the suitcase, it looks like it's broken and swelled up so that the shaft isn't going down on this particular arm. All right, so right here, you can really see a crack and a swelling that's happening. So what I really want to be able to do is just take this entire handle out of the suitcase and then uh, maybe weld and, and hammer that back flush and then stick it back in. I think it's going to be hard to fix where it is right now. So let's see if we can figure out how to get this out. All right, so my first guess is that this piece of plastic is snapped into place and if I can pop it free, I should be able to find some screws that are holding the handle down in the suitcase. Oh, phone charger. Oh, here we go. This looks promising. Okay, I see a screw in each of these arms. So let's take those out. There we go. Whew. Right there. Now I can really see the dent and the crack on the back side of this stem. Looks like they both have a problem. All right, so it looks like these plastic shims are what are keeping these two parts from separating from one another. So I need to be able to pry out the plastic shim. This is really difficult because there's four pins that have to be pressed at the same time in order to separate these parts. I'm going to try making a jig that will press these buttons all at the same time. Whoops. These are really hard to get out.
So after I broke the suitcase, I went ahead and looked up if I can just buy a replacement handle. And you can, but it's about $40. And I thought, why would I want to spend money when I could practice TIG welding for free? I've tried TIG welding thin aluminum a couple times before and it has never gone very well. I usually just burn right through the material. Uh, but this time I'm gonna take care to, to set things up properly and go a little bit slower and we'll see if we can get better results. All right, to help keep me from blowing right through the material, I'm gonna try welding an additional piece of aluminum on the interior so that there's a little more thickness when I go to weld this main piece. Far from perfect, but I think we're gonna go forward with it. Well, it's not perfect, but that might be as good as it's going to get. It extends with some effort. The problem is the button isn't releasing this, this detent anymore. Maybe I'll just cut it off. It's interesting that the one that I welded still works fine. It's the other one that's not working. I never even noticed that when I had it apart. All right, so the new problem is that by pressing the button on the top of the handle, this little button does not retract like it should. And so it's preventing the handle from being pushed down. Um, and I'm thinking that the quickest way to solve this is to just file a bevel onto the bottom side of this button so that it easily slips downward but doesn't allow itself to slip all the way up. The challenge, of course, is how I'm going to file a spring-loaded pin without it just moving out of my way. All right, the filing idea didn't work very well because the, the little pin just moves out of the way when I try to file it. So <laughs> last resort, I'm just going to tape the, the pocket closed so that the pin can't push out. This would have been easier to do before assembly. Well, I said at the beginning that I thought this one would be easy, and I think I've shown that I was completely right. 